Hey, hey, hey. All right, y'all, I just got done watching back the game between the Washington Wizards and the Philadelphia 76ers, and the main thing that stood out to me, obviously besides the big night 48-point performance from Joel Embiid, is that Tyrese Maxey just continues to perform at higher levels than I ever expected him to, and that's coming from someone who was really high on Tyrese Maxey this past offseason. He has taken over the starting point guard role for the Philadelphia 76ers, and it has just supercharged this lineup, and I was always on the bandwagon that you know losing James Harden wouldn't be a huge deal for the Sixers, but I am just going to come out and fully say that Tyrese Maxey being the starting point guard for this team is a 10 times better fit than James Harden could have ever dreamed of being for Philadelphia. The chemistry between Maxey and Embiid is insanely good. Maxey can drill, catch and shoot threes, he can hit threes off the dribble, he can drive to the rim, he can hit floaters, he can finish when he gets to the rim. The only real thing that was holding him back from being at James Harden's current level was his playmaking, passing, assisting, whatever you want to call it. And this next part I already mentioned when I talked about the James Harden trade when it happened, but you're essentially replacing Harden with Maxey, who again, I think is just as good, if not a better player currently. And not only does he cost way less money, but then you were able to go out and get additional pieces for trading James Harden, including guys like Nico Batum, Marcus Morris, KJ Martin, all guys that could provide you real valuable minutes at positions of need. Anyway, shifting back to Maxi, again, it's only been six games, so small sample size, keep that in mind, but he is averaging career highs in points per game at 25 points, assists per game over seven assists. If the season was to end today, he'd be a part of the 50-40-90 club with 7 plus 3 point attempts per game, which is absurd efficiency. He's getting to the free throw line at career high numbers as well with 5 free throw attempts per game. But perhaps most importantly, and again the reason why this whole James Harden fiasco is essentially being brushed under the rug because of how well Tyrese Maxey's playing, is the assist to turnover ratio. Again, he's at 7.3 assists per game, only 1.2 turnovers per game. Plus, in three of these first six games, Maxey has had seven or more assists while also having only one or less turnovers. I've been loving the fact that Tyrese Maxey is making these plays look really easy and simple. He's using his elite athleticism and rim pressure to then open up his game even more, and rather than continuing to just put up shots like he would in the past, he's now looking for his teammates and making really nice reads, again off of drives or in pick and roll opportunities. For example, this play early on in the game against the Wizards, drives to the rim, Gafford has to come over and help, and it leaves the big man wide open for a really nice no-look dump pass from Maxi. And then from there, the rest of his good assists were pretty much just pick and roll opportunities with Joel Embiid, and I have to say, empty corner pick and rolls between these two might just be one of the best actions in the entire NBA. Not only has Tyrese Maxey come pretty close to perfecting the pocket pass to Joel Embiid, and so when you have these two running a pick and roll on a cleared out side of the court when they have the whole half of a half court to themselves, it's just really tough to stop because you have Tyrese Maxey getting a full head of steam to the rim, and if both defenders decide to collapse on that, then he simply just dumps the ball off to Joel Embiid, who now has his own clear lane to the rim for an easy scoring opportunity. So then you might just say, oh, we'll just play it straight up, you know, don't help as much on Tyrese Maxey, but then for this example here, you'll see that Maxey is then just able to use his head of steam to beat his man and get to the rim, for yet another easy scoring opportunity. And even if a team is able to defend this first action, first pick and roll action well, and they're able to stop any driving opportunities, then at this point, Embiid sets the screen, dives to the rim, posts up, and Tyrese Max will just feed him in the post. And at this point, it's either a one-on-one -on -one isolation opportunity for Embiid, or you send the double, and then yes, Tyrese Maxey, a 40% plus three-point shooter, wide open on the three-point line for an easy catch-and-shoot opportunity. It really is insane how easy these two make it look to score a basketball in the NBA. You know, for all the talk about what the Dame Giannis pick-and-roll would look like, there was another Eastern Conference duo right under our noses the entire time that might rival them or even be above them. Before I wrap up this video, I do want to go back to my Maxi Harden comparisons because... 
While I don't want my words to get twisted, I, I do just want to point out that I, I really do think the Sixers team is just better without James Harden and with Maxi running the show. Because with the role James Harden was playing for this team for the past couple seasons, he was very ball dominant, he had the ball in his hands a ton, he would hold on to the ball for you know like half a possession before giving it up, and it would usually just end in a pick and roll with Joel Embiid, and then he'd either drive to the rim or drop a pocket pass or you know just anything like that. But again, with Tyrese Maxey running the show, he's not holding on to the ball for half a possession. He's keeping it moving. He's moving without the ball. He's actually a shooting threat when he's off the ball. And although James Harden is no doubt a better facilitator than Tyrese Maxey, all you really need to get this offense moving on an average night is just some simple pick and roll actions. And that's something that Tyrese Maxey has nailed to this point being able to facilitate in those situations. He doesn't have the same craftiness or creativity that James Harden might as a passer, but I will gladly take all of the other things that Tyrese Maxey does well and does better than James Harden over that. And I think it's safe to say that the results agree with this statement as well, as the Sixers have started the season 5-1, and one, and although they've had maybe an easier schedule with a game against Portland at home, a game against Washington at home, Two games against Toronto with one home, one away. They did also just beat the Phoenix Suns, albeit without Booker and Beal by 12 points, and their only loss in the season so far was a one-point loss to Milwaukee on opening night. But even without just focusing on the record, I believe in Joel Embiid as a player, I believe in Tyrese Maxey as a player, and I will continue to keep on saying it until more people start to believe me, but I really do think people are underrating this 76ers team, especially after the loss of James Harden. I feel like a lot of people are counting them out. And again, I'm not trying to say that they are on the same level as the Bucks or the Celtics, but I do really think if we can just keep Embiid healthy and get to the postseason and have him not be nursing an injury, that they actually could make some noise. They have an MVP candidate, they have a second star player, and they have plenty of really good rotational players who so far to this point in the season have been stepping up. And at the end of the day, it will ultimately come down to the production of Tyrese Maxey as the second man to Joel Embiid, and if he's able to keep up this level of play that he's been showing so far, I have no doubt in my mind that the Sixers will prove a lot of people wrong this season. That's all I got for this one. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see y'all in the next one.